And so before you start the medication, which is, I don't know why they would ever call it Go Lightly, but you know it's Go Lightly or Fleets, and before you start that bowel prep, you um, drink clear liquids for a day so that you don't have as much fiber and food in your, in your bowel, and then you go ahead and um, you drink the bowel prep, and unfortunately it causes diarrhea. So during that time while your bowel is cleaning out, it's really important for you to drink extra fluids. So Gatorade, tea, um, juice, anything that you can see through, no milkshakes. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then when your bowel is clean, you know on the third day or the second day you go for your colonoscopy. Okay. And Kathy, you've had your colonoscopy. I have. So you've been through this. So I've, you, been through a sig okay. I've been through a sigmoidoscopy okay. and I saw my sigmoid colon and I did that with no medication and you know it's um, not uncomfortable. It just feels like maybe you have to have a bowel movement. Uh -huh. And you can see this nice picture of your colon as they're going through the colon. And then when I hit 50 I had a colonoscopy. Okay. And then about how long does it take to have these procedures done, the colonoscopy or the sigmoidoscopy? It's very, very quick. There is that you go to either the GI center or um, some of the family practice doctors or um, surgeons do it at the hospital. And so you would go get a quick history taken so that we're sure that if we give you medicine you won't have any problems. The nurse puts in an IV because that's the way we want to give the medication so that it works really quickly and then the nurse says okay I'll see you in a little while. You get wheeled back into the room for the colonoscopy. You're greeted by the doctor, the nurse and you see the big um, TV screen and the next thing you know you're back in the recovery room um, wide awake. So it's pretty fast. I'd say an hour. Okay. An hour and then you need a little time to wake up and patients always are rummy afterwards or you know a little um, tired so we recommend that a family member take them home. They can't drive home by themselves. Okay. Very good. So then if the public wants a fecal occult blood test they can attend the ISU Health Fair right. and that is March, is it March 19th and 20th? Yes. So it's a Thursday and Friday from seven to one. one that's correct. Okay. And if they don't, if they can't get off that time from work, they could go in to get their blood drawn early at the hospital. So you could actually get your blood drawn and pick up your fecal occult blood cards, and then um, they we can mail you the results. Okay. So. Okay. Both ways. Very good. And here in a little bit, I will be showing an American Cancer Society DVD that talks about the different types of screening. So it's very informative. Um, so like I said earlier, Kathy and I are working together to promote Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Oh, so we're God. doing Health Focus, um, which we'll be doing every year to raise awareness. But also we have been um, setting out table tents in the community. Um, that talk about the importance of getting screened. Um, also, um, articles in the newspaper and newsletters. Um, posters at posters. the fitness centers. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, posters at the health department, a display at the health department, posters at ISU. Mm -hmm. So if anybody in the community wants additional information, they can always contact myself or Kathy at ISU. Uh, you can also visit the health department's website, which is www.sdhdidaho.org. You can also visit the CDC website at cdc.gov and go to the Screen for Life web link and get additional information there. Um, that's where Kathy and I have gotten a lot of our information, mm -hmm. um, the materials that we have used. So, and Kathy, through the ISU Health Fair too, tell me a little bit about what your ISU nursing students will be doing. Well, my ISU nursing students are going to be talking about not only the importance of being screened for colorectal cancer, but what can we do to prevent colorectal cancer. So probably the two biggest things that you can do are have a healthy diet and um, keep your weight at a healthy weight. So the students are going to talk about not the fact that they're teaching a healthy diet for your colon, but it's actually a healthy diet for your heart and for your weight and everything else. So increasing fiber is important and we talk a lot about how important fiber is in our diet, but probably the latest research that's really important for us to hear in Idaho is that um, the recommendation is red meat twice a week and no more than that. 
and um, a serving that's uh, the size of a deck of cards. And so that's going to be a new message, I think, for lots of people who will be at the health fair. And um, so that's what my students are okay. going to be doing. So the importance of eating rice, so getting the fiber through fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, reducing your intake of red meat, so more chicken, um, fish. fish, the lean meats. Um, mm -hmm. Also, what about the importance of drinking water, um, reducing your consum consumption of um, soda, alcohol, well, alcohol looks like um, it may be a risk factor if it's, there's more than one drink a day. So one drink a day we know is good for your heart. Mm -hmm. So we don't want you to give up everything that you like to do. Um, but certainly healthy, um, good quality protein, you know, fish, chicken, um, pork, those kinds of things are really very, very helpful. Um, vitamins, there's a, a good correlation between taking a multivitamin with folic acid that seems to be cancer preventive and an aspirin a day um, which is also good for your heart has been shown in some studies that that's um, very protective too. And how about exercise, Kathy? Oh my goodness, <laughs> exercise is good for everything. <laughs> exercise and a healthy weight. You know, we know that that prevents breast cancer, we know that it prevents colon cancer, we know that it's just good for everything. It's a cure-all for life. everything. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Kathy and I really recommend that you get out there, exercise. Um, it's recommended that adults get at least 30 minutes of exercise each day. Children should get 60 minutes of exercise each day. Right. So important. And yes, it's the cure-all for everything. Mm -hmm. So good to exercise and eat right. And, and you know, when you say exercise, a walk mm -hmm. for 20 minutes or half an hour is perfect. And so I'd highly encourage people to get out, walk with your spouse, call it a date, walk with your kids, um, just do something and outside. We live in too. Idaho where it's gorgeous yes. to be out. So. And it has to be something that you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. Exactly. And yeah, if you can find someone to exercise with, I mean, that's an incentive to keep you going too. So mm -hmm. you got to enjoy it to keep with it. So mm -hmm. now um, we're going to go ahead and put on the American Cancer Society DVD that talks about the different types of screening. And then following that, we're going to have a special guest, and it's the Polyp Man. And so I'm going to talk with the Polyp Man. Okay. So, so Kathy, I want to thank you so much for coming today. And keep up the good work, and okay. I will see, see you at the ISU Health Fair. Great. I hope to see everyone at the ISU Health Fair. It's not just colorectal screening that we look at at the health fair. We do skin cancer, breast cancer, um, there's um, pulmonary function testing, there's brighten your smile. All of the health departments, um, all of the colleges in the health yes. department work on delivering something that's really very um, informative yes, to everyone. Yes, very much. So, all right. Thank you. If you're like most people, the thought of getting colon cancer or even going for a colon cancer test can be frightening to you. What if they find something you're probably thinking, then what? Besides, colon cancer deals with a part of the body that is, shall we say, not easy to talk about. Well, the good news is colon cancer is a cancer that can be found and removed before it has a chance to become a danger to you. Colon cancer is cancer of the lining of the lower parts of the bowel, called the colon and the rectum. Colon cancer is one of the most common cancers. Both women and men can have it. And the chances of having it increase as you get older, starting sharply at age 50 and continuing as you age. Fortunately, you do have the power to keep colon cancer out of your life. Let me tell you how. Most colon cancers start with a growth called a polyp. If you find and remove the polyp early, you can prevent cancer from even occurring. How do you find it early? There are several ways. Here are two of them. There are tests that can detect tiny amounts of blood in the 